Hello guys, welcome to another episode of this van conversion series. In today's video we're going to take another look at solar panels, but I'm going to come at it from a different angle. Traditionally what you'd do is you'd start off with your loads and then you'd calculate the size of your solar panels from there. But today I'm going to look at it the opposite way around. I'm going to take a 100 watt solar panel and then see what we can actually run off of that panel. And I'm going to work the calculations back the other way. The reason for doing it this way is you might only have room on your roof for one panel or you may only have the budget for one panel. So this may be your deciding factor. It's not necessarily what you would like to use in the van but it's what you can afford or what you've got space for. For this example I've selected a Renergy 100 watt solar panel. Solar panel ratings are given under standard test conditions. The light source is calibrated to deliver 1000 watts per meter squared onto the surface of the panel and the surrounding ambient temperature is kept at 25 degrees C. These are the standard conditions that all solar panels are rated at. From previous calculations that we've done we know that taking the volts times the amps equals the watts. So if we use the optimum operating voltage 18.9 and multiply that by the operating current 5.29 we get 100 watts. The rating of the panel is based on one hour at standard test conditions. Obviously during the day we're going to have a varying amount of sunshine. Typically in the morning in the early hours between 8 and 9 the sun's irradiance is about half of what it would be at midday. So we need to look back at some historical data for the area that we live in to find out how many average daily sunshine hours we can expect. We're mainly going to be travelling in Europe. So if we look at this map, the northern countries of Europe, we can typically expect to get 3.3 hours of average daily sunshine. We simply take the 100 watts rating of our panel multiply it by the 3.3 hours of sunshine a day and come up with a figure of 330 watt hours. That's the total amount of power that we can expect to generate during one day. However, we won't be able to use all of that power because there's some losses to take into account. We could have some dirt on the surface of our solar panels. There'll be voltage drops on the cables between the panel and the charge controller and there's also some inefficiencies in the way the charge controller works and how it regulates the power from the solar panel to charge the batteries. So if we take all of those things into account we can expect some system losses of about 30%. So if we take our total power of 330 watt hours minus 30% system losses we come out with a net value of 231 watt hours and this is the value that we can actually use to decide what we can power within our van. Now we know how much we can generate in one day, realistically what can we use? I've taken some of my own devices, plugged them into my wattmeter and I've recorded the readings here. So we can see that I could use my laptop which uses 40 watts for three hours giving me a total watt hours of 120. I can run some LED lights for a few hours, my charge my iPhone, um, charge my Kindle and even use my 4G Wi-Fi dongle which really uses hardly any watts at all. I can use that for six hours a day. So if we total all of those it comes to our figure of 231 watt hours. So we can use quite a lot of devices for quite a few hours during the day with one 100 watt solar panel. Obviously you wouldn't necessarily use all of these devices in the same day. So there's quite a bit of diversity there. And I think you can see this demonstrates that you don't actually need to put a lot of solar power onto your van to make it usable. Now you can't use the power direct from your solar panels. It needs to go via some leisure batteries with a charge controller. So let's look at the calculation to size a leisure battery suitable for this single 100 watt panel. The leisure batteries run on a 12 volt system so we take our total generated power of 231 watt hours divide by 12 volts 
and that gives us 19.3 amp hours and this is what we will use to size our batteries. Lead acid batteries don't like to be discharged fully. At best you don't want to go any further than 50% discharge. They do say that AGM batteries can go up to 80% discharge but the deeper you discharge a battery the less average cycles you're going to get out of it. So it's far better to keep the depth of discharge to a minimum and then you'll get a much longer life out of your battery. So in this example I'm going to use 50% depth of discharge. So we take the 19.3 amp hours, divide by 50%, effectively it doubles the amp hours of our battery and we get 38.6 amp hours. So because we can only use half of the battery, the battery effectively needs to be twice the size. One more thing to take into consideration is the ambient temperature that the battery is going to be stored in. The temperature of the surroundings does affect the output of the battery. So we can see here in this table at 10 degrees C there's a multiplying factor of 1.11. So we take our 38.6 amp hours, multiply by 1.11 and we get 42.8 amp hours. And that would be the battery power required for one day. Now let's say that we didn't have any sunshine for a couple of days, it was really cloudy bad weather and we couldn't recharge the batteries we would want probably a couple of days autonomy on the batteries so that we could go maybe a weekend without having any solar so we simply oversize the batteries again so that we can have a couple of days spare capacity so we'll take the 42.8 amp hours multiply by two days and we get a total battery power of 85.6 amp hours so something like a 90 amp hour battery will be plenty for this single 100 watt solar panel. So we could have one 100 watt solar panel, one 90 amp hour battery and a charge controller and that would be our solar system complete. One last thing that I want to discuss is the tilt angle of the panels. The panel will produce its maximum duty when it's facing directly at the sun so that the surface is at 90 degrees to the angle of the rays of sunlight. Now if you're living in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere and you've got your panels laying flat on the roof of your van they will be at a different angle to the sun. They won't be at 90 degrees to the sun. And that angle is directly related to the lines of latitude on the earth. Here in Europe we're typically between something like 40 degrees and 60 degrees north and Central Europe has a latitude of 54 degrees north. So our panels ideally need to be tilted to an angle of 54 degrees. This will make sure that the sun's rays at the middle of the day are directly 90 degrees to the surface of the panel and it does make a huge difference with the output. Also we need to take into consideration the time of year because in the winter the sun is much lower on the horizon and in the summer the sun is very high in the sky. So we need to make a little adjustment to the angle of the tilt depending on what season we're in. Roughly speaking during winter we can increase the angle by 15 degrees. Because the sun is much lower on the horizon we need to tilt the panel up further to get it to be 90 degrees to the sun. And in the summer when the sun is directly overhead we can afford to decrease that angle, lay the panel more flat to get that 90 degree angle. By tilting your panels you can expect to achieve up to 30% more power out of your solar panel than having it just laying flat on the surface of your van. There's a really good video that the RV geeks have done. I'll put a link at the top here and a link in the description They've done a live demonstration of tilting their panels and physically seeing the effect on the power generated. It's a really good video and worth a watch. Therefore, because we're traveling in Europe, I'm going to engineer a way that I can tilt my solar panels on the roof of my van. I'm going to secure them with some aluminium angle and a couple of aluminium braces. And then I'm going to drill a series of holes into that angle which correspond to the angles for summer, winter 
and autumn and spring. So during the normal time of the year it will be at 54 degrees and during the summer I'll lay it back to 39 degrees and during the winter I'll tip it up further to 69 degrees because ideally I just want to maximize the most I can get out of these solar panels. Obviously with this arrangement I'm not going to lift these panels if the weather conditions are poor. If it's very high winds obviously I'll leave them flat on the roof but if it's nice and sunny and calm conditions I'm going to elevate my panels and I'm going to maximize the amount of solar that I can generate. I shall simply use a series of M8 nuts and wheel knobs so that they can quickly be undone, laid flat and locked back into position for when we're traveling. I've been really busy over the last couple of weeks finalizing the detail plans for the internal part of the sprinter. I've done a detail cutting plan. My order has gone into Moreland for the furniture board and I'm expecting it to be delivered the week before Easter. I hope you found that video to be useful to you. You can obviously use these calculations to work out your own solar system for your own van conversion. And if you think that other people would benefit from this video, please do share it on social media. Give me a thumbs up and if you've got any questions at all, write them in the comments below and I'll come back to you as quickly as I can. So please make sure that you're subscribed and I look forward to seeing you again when we're back in the workshop. Cheers.